We will serve our government, bear arms, protect our citizens from enemies who try to overthrow our government and our country. And we serve in whatever role is necessary. Now, I, I sincerely do believe that our United States military, not just Army, sorry guys, but I believe that the military is there and set in place for our protection. Now, we can look, and as we look throughout history, or even in our current day and age, we see that there are many people that are hiding because of what they believe. They're in hiding, they're in fear. And around the world, they, I, I looked it up, and they said there's around 360 million Christians that live in levels of high persecution. Not just people look down on what they believe, but high persecu persecution just for following Christ. Now, if you put that in mathematical terms, that's one out of, out of seven believers worldwide. One out of seven. And then if you think about it, America only has just over 332 million people as far as the population goes. So that's even more than our population here. That's just like our whole country being persecuted. Every single person being persecuted. It's more than that. 360 million believers. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful for a place where I can serve and worship my God freely. I can go to church when I want. I can go to the store and buy a Bible if I want, talk to people about their faith, have conversations, and not be afraid. Amen. Not be afraid of people turning me into the secret police, turning me into the government. I don't have to live in fear, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. That I fought, I even fought for my country, and there's many that have fought for this country as well to ensure that we have these freedoms. That we have these freedoms. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that are wanting to or trying to take away those freedoms from us. Mm -hmm. different, different mindsets, different political views, and I'm not up here today. I, I, I promise you, I'm not teaching a political class. I'm not. I'm here to tell you that I believe in freedom. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that I believe in the freedom to worship, the freedom to serve, the freedom to... As it was put in our Constitution, bear arms if I want. Amen. All of these different things that are given to us by our country, by our government that was established by God himself. That God put this desire in these men's heart back in 1600 or whenever they left because they were going through religious persecution. I want to go somewhere where I can worship God. Now, the Church of England at one point in time, probably was a good um, establishment or place of worship. But throughout the years, things got misconstrued in their belief system, in their leadership system. Then it became more of the state and more state-church kind of feuds, and these men were caught in the middle of it. Now I can't even worship God the way I want to. I want to go somewhere where I can. And as they would step, step foot here in this country, they would establish that, the country that we have today. I want to read this. I want to read this. A small little portion of, again, what we all should know. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are institutes among men, deriving their just power for the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the rights of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new governments. Now, the, 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 this is the Declaration of Independence. Very small, very handy. Something that we all should know. Something that we all should hold dear because, again, like I mentioned, there's a few different things that are in this world that want to go against our freedom. Mm -hmm. Not just capitalism and not just uh, democracies, but against God himself. Mm -hmm. 
There's these places and these people we can look at our, not current century, 1900s, that people would have this thought process and they would put it into place. And you can see that in different countries, they had to hide and they had to run and be in fear. And we've all heard of the Iron Curtain, right? We've all heard of that hammer and sickle. We've all heard of communism and socialism. These two go hand in hand for, for, for the most part. These two things stress, stress freedom. I'm not talking about they emphasize it. I mean that they put, they put a lot of weight on freedom, the freedom of man. Now, communism is a political and economic doctrine that aims to replace private property and a profit-based economy with public ownership and communal control. Communal control. In socialism, it's said that social and economic doctrine that calls for public rather than private ownership or control of property and natural resources. Almost essentially saying that it becomes now property of everybody. Now, I can't even own my own home. I can't even own my own land. I can't even own my own store if I care to. That it now becomes property of those that are in the community, per se. But the first thing that these two political and economical doctrines aim to destroy is leadership. Is leadership. They aim to destroy the preaching and the teaching of the youth. That they destroy books. They destroy people wanting to have a mind to be free. They want to push them under this, this doctrine to believe these teachings that it's for the mass. Everything is for everybody. They try to use, even at times, the Bible for their, for their goals. They say even in Acts chapter 4 and 5, when they say that they, they came together as a community, they put every, and every man had everything in common, right? That's what he was talking about in the book of Acts. And they say, oh yeah, even in the Bible, the Bible said, talks about communism and socialism. It's good, right? Because the Bible talks about it. But in that time frame, in that time frame, it was um, voluntary. It was voluntary. They weren't commanded or made to sell all they had and give to this communal. They wasn't obligated for anybody to do that, but they did it out of love. Because there were things going on, persecution taking place, and people needed help. So they would get together to help the church out. Even we could read about a story in Acts chapter 5 with uh, Ananias and Sapphira, who would sell their property and sell their land and give the money to, to the church. But that was an interesting outcome. That was an interesting outcome. That's what he said, wasn't it? Um, while it was yours, wasn't it yours to do with whatever you wanted? Why have you found it in yourself to lie to the Holy Ghost? And these different things would take place. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to tell them we sold it for this much and keep some of the money. You know, they, nobody told them you have to give everything. They said, I'm going to sell this land and I'm going to give it all to the church. They said that. They could have said, listen, we have some things that we would like to do. I'll give you a portion of what I make. So this goes back into, to, to, to the fact that we should hold true to what we say. Mm -hmm. The Bible says not to make a vow that you cannot keep. Mm -hmm. That if you're going to do something, if you say you're going to do something, do it. Do it. No one's holding a gun to your head. God is not holding a gun to your head. Making you do things. Oh, I have to do it because if I don't, the church will be mad and the church this and that. We should do things for God because we want to. Amen. This all comes down to this freedom that we have. Now we, now we learn about different things. But I want to, I want to say this and then I'll get off the topic. But I want, to, I want to state that communism and Christianity, they're incompatible. They're incompatible. Now one cannot be a true Christian and a true communist at the same time. So how then is communism... They have a big word here. <laughs> Irreconcilable. 
unable to be brought together? How are these two thought processes or mindsets unable to come together as one cohesive thought? Well, first place, communism leaves out God in general, because communists by nature or by taught, by doctrine per se, they're, they're, they're atheists. They don't believe in God. They're materialistic and they're in their secular life, and they do all of these different things. And if you don't know about it, we can sit down and talk about it some more. But what we believe in relation to war, what we believe in relation to war is, if you've read the Bible at, the, at any length, you would see that there's many times where there was war in the Bible. Many, 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 many I could keep going on. Because as I was studying it, I found just in the Old Testament, from, from Genesis to, I think like 1 Kings, 1 Second Chronicles, it's like 47 wars and battles that took place. 47. The very first one in Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14, when Abraham would go with his 318 servants, and go rescue his nephew Lot. He would take them to war. He would take them to battle to gain back his possessions. David would do that many times. God would even stand for the Israelites, his own people. God would stand for his people. Send his angel down there and kill 185,000 in one night. That's a lot of men. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work that angel put in. But this is something that God has he put in the place so that way his, his people would be established. They would go look at the promised land, and right as soon as they would get across, God basically told them to go to work. Go to work. Kick out all, the, all those that are not supposed to be here because this is your land. This is where I promised you. And different things would take place. We would see King David. King David would go to war so many different times throughout his his reign as king and one of his jobs was to get rid of all of those giants the remaining giants that were in the land and he would go and he would wage war to defend their right to worship their god see it even back then different things would take place and then i, I want to point out something that when david killed i was brought up in, in different preachings and teachings and things that David went to Goliath with five stones, right? Five stones, five smooth stones, but he would only use one. He would only use one for Goliath because of God, because God's providence, and God was with him during that event. But it was said that those other four were for Goliath's brothers. Goliath had brothers, giants in the land of Philistine, of the Philistines. And we would read about it in the, in the end of 2 Samuel, how he would go and destroy these, these ungodly, uncircumcised Philistines. That God would give them the authority, would give them the power, and give them the backing to do this. I believe that God has given us the same ability and power, but, but this is one thing that I would like to mention to you. That we've seen, even throughout, throughout the sea, from the 10,000s to 12,000s in that time frame, that there was a series of religious wars, series of religious wars that was initiated, supported, and most of the time directed by the Catholic Church. We call these the Crusades. I'm sure many of us have heard about the Crusades or the Knights of the Crusaders and these different men that would go to war for the, the Catholic Church during the medieval period. <laughs> now these were, I think these were the ideas of man. Because what they would do, the aim was to capture the sacred places in the Holy Land from the Muslims who lived there. So it was intended as a war to right wrongs done against Christianity or against the Catholic Church, not against God. I don't believe God sanctioned those wars, sanctioned all of those different killings, and they're trying to do different things. 
that the first crusade was started by Pope Urban II in the year 10,085. Long time ago. Long time ago. But as a result of this, as a result of this, let us be clear, let us be clear that followers of Christ are not going out today to wage holy wars. We're not going out with our, with our guns and our ammo to go try to tell people and recruit people to the kingdom of God. How do we win people to God? With love. With kindness. With sincerity. With the backing of God behind us. I'm not going out to start issues and problems. So we're not going out as believers, as Christians. We're not going out to kill the infidel where he stands. We're not going out to forcibly bring people to church or to, you're coming to church with me today. Like, no. Because we know that by force, no man can have his mind changed. Mm -hmm. If you force somebody to do something, they will ultimately kick against it and firmly stand against you. Where if you go to them in kindness, you go to them in meekness and just showing them different things, that somebody's mindset and their mentality is able to be changed. It really is. You talk to somebody in love. If some, has somebody ever corrected you and you felt they were being condescending? Mm -hmm. they, you felt that they were being, um, looking down on you like you were dumb, you were stupid, or you didn't know better, or these different things. And you feel like they came to you like with an attitude or disrespectfully, man, your your mind, your whole mindset flips and changes. As soon as as soon as that guard goes up, you don't hear anything. You don't hear anything. You're thinking of a response. You're you're getting upset and mad. That's not the way we're supposed to do things. If somebody says no, okay, well you have a good one. I'm not going to force you to believe in God because you won't change your mind anyway. And all of these different things. So in the Bible, the, yes, we believe that God is there with us and he's established our country, established this great nation and we do go to war to, to defend our freedoms. But this does not condone murder. I'm not, we're not condoning murder today. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you that going um, and killing people and, and doing things is good. Because the Bible does say not to commit murder. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between going to war and killing and being at home and committing murder. Well, they say murder is an unlawful killing of another human without justification or valid excuse. Especially the unlawful killing of another human with malice intent or being predetermined. If you thought about this, how am I going to kill this man or this woman? How am I going to hide their body? How am I going to do these things? And we see murders, and, and here we don't see murders. Or here we hear about them more often than not. This man did this. This man did that. Again, as believers, we're not looking. We don't go. I don't go out looking for problems. I hope you don't go out looking for problems. I hope you don't go do all three levels of combative, so that way you can go to Walmart and show the people at Walmart what you know. That was my Nutella. Yeah, you know all these different things. <laughs> We don't, we don't do that so that way we can cause problems and fights. We don't go antagonizing people because we know we can win. Yeah, I'm going to pick on that little guy over there. Hey, what are you doing, shorty? You know, none, none of these things. We, we carry ourselves very humbly and meek as believers. And the Bible would talk about that in Romans chapter 12. It says, recompense, repay to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. For, and it says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. He says to live peaceably with all men, as much as you can. I mean, don't let them push you around, of course. But we want to live peaceably with them. He said, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Now, if somebody spits on my car, I'm not going to go run into him with my vehicle. I'm not going to, if somebody flip me off the traffic, I'm not going to run him down and, and curb, check him, you know. Yeah, take that. I'm not going to do any of these things. 
But we allow the Lord to be the one to, to, to you know what, Lord? Lord, have mercy on them. That should be our prayer. Yeah. Lord, Lord, I don't, you know what? I'm just going to go about and go to my cold stone. I'm going to have a good day no matter what you do. Because even in verse 20 it says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. That even though people talk bad about us and people hate us, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to show you that same energy. I'm not going to show you the same energy even though that's the common, the common thing to do nowadays. Oh, I'm going to give you the same energy you give me. You're disrespectful, I'm going to disrespect you. You're violent, I'm going to be violent too. I took martial arts for two weeks. I know what I'm doing. All of these different things are a bad mindset to have as a believer. That we should be, again, as he said in verse 18, live peaceably with all men as much as lies within us. I'm not saying to have a small little fuse. You know, my fuse is that big. Oh, I tried, Lord. You know, I tried to live peaceably with him. You know, none of that. Because where does the long suffering come in? Where does our patience come in? Where does suffering long like God does? Where does that come in? That we're supposed to be believers. We're supposed to be those that give example to men and women. Now, I read all of that to you to say that if somebody breaks into my house and they put my wife in danger, they put my life in danger, they put those that live in the home with me in danger, that it is my responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen. To make sure that I stand my ground by all means necessary. Now, you want to take my car at one point? Sure, here, take the car. You know, whatever. I can go get another. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather not try to be um, a superhero and risk my own life. Take the wallet. I can cancel all my cards. No big deal. I'll call the, I'll call the credit people and have them, you know, walk, monitor my credit if somebody steals my. Identity. These different things, we have to be wise. Now, I know in the heat of the moment, sometimes it's hard to think properly. It's hard to think straight. All we think about is, you know, like the Hulk, smash, and I'm going to avenge my whatever. But these things, we have to be mindful of, because even Peter would do that. Even Peter would, oh, no, Lord, not... Not the Lord, and he pulled that sword out and swiped that man's gear off. He said, hey, those who live by the sword are not by the sword. Mm. That violence are, are, is there to those who are violent. These different things, and as we begin to believe in God and have faith in God, we know that he'll take care of us. Yeah. We know that he's there to protect us. You know, some, and I've heard countless stories of different people being in different places, Going through many different uh, instances where God has been there. You know, they interviewed this man that was going to go rape and kill this lady. He was like, no, that was two, that was two men in suits walking with that woman. So how about messing with her? Went off on his own, did something else, got caught. And she was by herself. You know, that, there's times when God is there with us and for us. Not when we're arrogant and proud and we think that we got it all, God will let you fall. Just, just because. Not because he's mean. You know, because people, people sometimes are not smart. I'll be honest with you. Christians as well. You know, we get into our attitudes and we get into this mindset of, I got it, I, I can do it. I'm not going to let nobody steal from me. You know, all of these things. We should be wise as serpents, he says. And harmless as doves. But in relation to war, if I have to stand up for my men and come back, I'm going to. If I have to make sure that we're, I'm not going out looking for trouble, again, I'm not going out downrange and looking for those, I'm going to go hunt them down, I'm going to kill them all. Like, no, 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 I'm here to protect, I want to get home, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I make it home, if I have men under me, I want to make sure they make it home. We have families, they have families, but we believe. 
that God, that God has given us the ability to stand up for ourselves. Now, again, not that we're going out looking for issues and problems. But I want to read this other one to you. The Bill of Rights. How I many know what their First Amendment right is? Your First Amendment right is your freedom of religion. Freedom of speech and the freedom of the press. The right of assembly and petition. Congress shall not make law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So they literally cannot make a law per this little booklet this is my Bill of Rights. This is my right to have freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. That it was, if you want to worship the trees, it's your right. Doesn't make it right, but I have the ability, that's what they're saying. This is, my, this is the Bill of Abilities, if you would. My Second Amendment right, who knows that? I think most Americans know that one. The right to bear arms. Not these arms. I'm talking about <laughs> like firearms. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now we call it a militia. Modern vernacular, we call it an army. We call it a military. You know, they gave it. It's, it's all right to be in the military. It's all right as civilians to have these weapons. I think we're the only country in the world that still allows that. Only country. The only one that allows their citizens to have weapons, firearms, not just weapons. I believe we're the only country, and they're trying to and they're trying to uh, to stop that. There's many different things that go out, many laws that are trying to be passed to restrict our ability to do so. But it's all right. It's my right if I want to walk around with an AK-47. <laughs> it's my right if I want to have a. a 357 Magnum or Desert Eagle in my, under my dashboard. You know, it's, it's the right of Americans to do these things. And I'm not saying to be stupid. I'm saying, we're, please be smart, okay? Don't walk, don't walk on base with an AT4 strapped to your back. Please, be smart, okay? These different, but God has established these men to help us be free. Mm -hmm. So let's live in freedom and wisdom. So there's a, there's a ton of group of people, there's a lot of people that, that don't believe in, in war, they don't believe that Christians should fight in wars, they don't believe that. Um, so they go into the military as conscientious objectors. I'm objecting consciously to, to killing anybody, to having a weapon, I don't even want to touch the weapon. You know, and it, it, that's a little weird. I, I get it, you don't want to kill, you don't want to harm anybody, I understand that. But when, when people stand up and teach that the Bible says, and God says, God wants, God wants us to be free. God wants us to worship Him. God wants us to serve Him. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the reason for the founding of our, of our great nation. It's, it has its problems, but it's a great nation indeed. So that's what, that's what we believe. There you go. Leave your AT4 at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, Reverend Little Rock, close the prayer, sir. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the teaching of the word. Father, for the wisdom imparted. Big God, that each one has learned. Big God, that each one will take what was learned tonight and use it, Lord God, in all the other decisions that we make. Lord, we ask that you continue, Lord, to give us the help, the strength, and have the ability to come to learn more of your word, Lord, and we we'll continue giving you all thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.